Hey guys, how's it going? What's up? I'm really excited today because I got two brand new continuous lights for my food photography and my video and I'm just dying to show you. They're, they're modifiable, they have power controls, they have a remote control, they have battery packs, just so but well, you know, let me just show you. I just picked up two of these Godex SLB 60 Wise continuous lights. They just came out. This is the box and this is the light. Now, I'm not sure what the SL stands for. Slick light, super light, stupendous light, I don't know, but pretty sure the B stands for battery and they have one model that doesn't include the battery and it's significantly cheaper. It's like half the price, but personally, I like the battery. I think I'm gonna find a lot of uses for it here in the studio. The 60 stands for the watt power and Y stands for the color temperature, yellow. They have a model that's daylight balanced at 5,500K and then they have this model which is yellow or tungsten balanced at 3,000K. However, if you're just using your continuous, whoa, <laughs> continuous light here to shoot stills, it doesn't really matter what temperature you buy your light in. So on this constant light, I have a fancy square array of LED lights here uh, here you have a large LCD screen with dials to control the light and back here you have this really nifty battery charger indicator. You just push this button and it lights up. Mine is dead. So I'll pop this on, I'll plug it in and while it's charging I'll set up my studio so I can test these bad boys out on a shoot. Well, my battery is finally charged now. I can turn it on and for this first shoot, I'm gonna be modifying the light with a large diffuser plus my brand new dish reflector grid combo set that I got for my constant light here. Now I'm gonna place the constant light about, I don't know, a foot, two feet away from the table and turn it on at 100%. I don't really wanna to dive too deep into the composition of this photo because, well, there's really nothing much to it. I got my camera overhead. I have a beautiful top-down view of these nice heirloom tomatoes. This photo is really all about the color and just making those colors pop off the frame. All I really have to do is find a cool spot to place my brand new linen that I got from Casa de Linus. If you haven't checked them out yet, do so now. I shouted them out in a previous video. They have some really beautiful stuff for food photographers. I don't know. It'll probably take me 45 minutes to get that right. But with that being said, let's take a shot and see where we're at. Well, yeah, I really love the color in this image. Those tomatoes there just really, really pop off this muted background. My exposure here was f5.6 at a 0.3 of a second ISO 100, which really isn't that bad considering I'm pumping this Godex constant light through this 60 degree grid and that large diffuser that I had set up. The diffuser alone knocks two to three stops off the light. This grid probably knocks off a couple of stops. If I was using this light and a softbox, then I would probably gain a few more stops back. The light here is set to tungsten, so I had my camera's white balance set to tungsten too. Now, Godox says that this light is set to 3000K, and, and I believe them, but Canons, in my opinion, shoot a little bit warm, so I knocked down the image's white balance to around 2900K. And it looks perfect to me. Personally, I, I think the light looks great in this image. I, I love those highlights and the soft but definite shadows. However, in the same way, I would modify the light in any of my food images. But speaking about that, to modify these lights, I've picked up some cool modifiers. Like I said in my last video, I actually like Godox modifiers. I've used them before and I, I like their quality and I definitely like their price. I picked up a dish reflector grid combo set. This is the dish reflector. This is the grid. Came with a couple of more grids actually. Three in total, 20 degree, a 40 degree, and a 60 degree. So I'm really excited to use those. I also picked up two Large soft boxes like the one you see back there, they came with the grids as well. All of this stuff for like less than 200 bucks. And these lights came with the Bowens S-mount. This is the speed ring to attach the soft box to the lights. So many brands make modifiers in the Bowens S-mount, which is really great if you can get your light in that mount because 
They're considerably cheaper. And you know, a lot of the brands like Godox make really quality stuff. All right, now I wanna test out these soft boxes. I think for that though, I wanna photograph something like a cocktail shot where a soft box is just a must have. I'm gonna use some of this fake ice as a stand in so I can really nail my composition before I go to pour my drink. So I've decided to backlight this drink image with the constant light here and this large soft box. I've raised it up and kind of tilted it forward. This will allow the light to pass through that liquid in that glass and really make this drink glow. One thing I'm gonna be keeping an eye on as I light my photograph is the base of this glass. You see this little black spot right about here? Yeah, I don't like that. Here, I'll move the light and you can watch it grow. It's like a Terra in space time or something like that. It's really distracting. I mean, I could Photoshop it out, but I think it's just as easy to move the light over a little bit and place it behind the glass a little bit more just to minimize that black spot as much as possible. You know, it's just the little details. All right, a little bit about the composition of my drink shot here. I have this nice cutting board and it's creating a nice line. I've placed it diagonally so it kind of adds a little bit of action to my photo along with these drink glasses, both kind of driving into the frame and then off here in the background, I've placed a bowl of limes and this bottle of tequila to help balance out the top end of the photo as well as add a little bit of framing to my subject. And then these three props, the bowl, the bottle, and whatever I place right here actually will help kind of drive the viewer's eye around the frame. But now that I have my composition all set, I'm pretty happy with it. It's time to mix up some drinks. Well, my margaritas are finished, they're ready to shoot. Now my camera is set to an aperture of f5 at ISO 100, and the Godex constant light back here is set to a 70% power setting, which has given me a shutter speed of 1.6, which is pretty good for that high of an aperture at that low of ISO. So I'm pretty happy with that. I can go ahead and take my picture and finish up this backlit beverage shot. Yeah, so this shot I was modifying with just the softbox and I, I gained a stop of light there on my shutter speed and the light was turned down to 70% instead of 100 like in that tomato shot. So that's probably a stop there as well. But I, I love working with constant lights like this for drink shots because what you see is what you get. I mean, situations like that little black spot on the bottom of the glass, you can easily you know, fix that or correct that with the constant light because you can see it in camera. Instead of playing that back and forth game like you do with, with strobes or with flashes, this soft box is really nice. It's a harder light source than in the food shot. You can, you can see more defined lines in the shadow areas. But for this image, that's really what I want to get this light to hit through this drink and, uh, and onto this board. It, it reminds me of the Afternoon. Now, a, a little trick here is that I use some fake ice underneath that real ice to prop up those lime slices in the glass and, and just make them sit up. The fake ice doesn't float well. It, it also allows more light to pass through it. I, I think it worked pretty well. Now, I don't wanna get into too much about video lighting. I'll, I'll save that for later, but the lighting concepts that I use for video are exactly the same as I, I use for my photography, only the exposure is way different. With photography, I can get away with slower shutter speeds because I'm locked down on a tripod. With the constant light back here, the softbox is cutting down the light, the diffuser is cutting down the light, light and I can still get a shutter speed of 1 15th like you see in this image. But with video, my shutter speed is locked because of the frame rate, you know, 24p or 30p, I'm locked in to about 1 60th of a second. So I've removed the inner baffle here inside the Godex softbox just to get as much light as possible. Also, this diffuser cuts down about two to three stops of light, so I'll get that out of here and we can see what the video's exposure looks like with just the softbox. All right, I've cranked the Godex continuous light to 100% and removed that diffuser. Because I did that, I was able to push the softbox in a little bit closer to my frame, giving us some more light. Now, with a shutter speed of 1 60th ISO 200, and with this light setup, this is what the video looks like at an aperture of f4. Now, here is the same shutter speed, but this time ISO 400, and I was able to move my aperture up to 5.6. And here's ISO 800 at f8. 
And why does this matter? Well, I've been looking for a light powerful enough to get me into those higher apertures without having to make the sacrifice of too much noise. Personally, I'm really nitpicky when it comes to noise, especially in my videos, but, but really in my food photography. For me, the camera that I have, the Canon 5DS, just really, really sucks <laughs> at handling noise at ISOs above 400. And I know this is not an issue for a lot of you. A lot of you have cameras that are just ISO beasts out there, which is fantastic. When I'm shooting video, I'm gonna be sticking to an ISO at around 400 maximum. Maybe my aperture will be around 5.6 if I'm using a single light. However, I have two of these, which is really great because I can use the other one modified as a fill light. Also, with the nifty remote here, I can turn them off and on and uh, I can put them on the same channel and control the power together, or I could put them on separate channels, say the key on channel A and the fill on channel B, and control them independently, and, and really zero in that fill light until I have the perfect key fill ratio. I spent a lot of time looking for constant lights that would fit my workflow. I mean, I read a ton of reviews, but I also wanted to find some lights for you guys that you know were at the right price in your budget, and you know also were still useful and made your life easier as a food photographer. After using these Godox SLBs on a couple of shoots here in the studio, I mean, they're not perfect. The battery only lasts about 25 to 30 minutes at 100% power. At that output, it, that's probably pretty good, but I don't know. This base here that attaches to the light stand for me is a little bit too long. Even at the stand's lowest position, it still raises the light up a couple of inches higher than my studio strobes, which at some points can be an issue. Now, when you go to rotate this little adjustment knob thingy here, it scrapes the body of the light, which is kind of annoying. Maybe a extra large washer there would help extend that out a little bit. Overall though, I, I think there's a lot of benefits to this light. I mean, you have the Bowens S mount, which is fantastic because you can get so many cheap modifiers in that mount. The build quality is very strong. It's a bright light. And I think even the battery is a benefit. I mean, for me, I'm constantly fighting wires. So being able to go wireless to grab that quick shot is just a huge lifesaver. I don't know, I love it. The links for the gear and this light will be in the description below. But on that note, if you like this video, show me some love. Give it a subscribe, turn on notifications, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.